Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. In our last sketch, we featured Hodgkin lymphoma at the dining hall. And now on to part two, non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In case you need a refresher, here's the rundown. B cells pop out of the bone marrow and head to the germinal center of lymph nodes and other lymphoid organs. Here, they mutate, form a tumor, and subsequently start taking over other lymphoid tissues throughout the body. But enough with the science. Psh, boring. I know why you're here. You want to see the magic. Well, you're in for a treat because non-Hodgkin lymphoma comes in a wide variety. Yep, you can find it all right here at Gurdon and Burkitt's shop for magical oddities. This dimly lit, dust-covered nook houses some of the world's most rare and evil objects. The shop has been run for decades by its owner and operator, Old Man Burkett. Uh, less of a store, really, and more of a museum for the macabre and violent history of B-cells and T-cells. See that chessboard in the foreground? It's our symbol for lymphoid tissue. It's where the immune cells like to hang out. Those white archers are our recurring symbol for B-cells. And those knights? Those are T-cells, of course. And let the word knickknacks remind you of NK cells. Non-Hodgkin lymphomas can arise from B-cells or T-cells, and rarely natural killer cells. B-cell lymphomas are the most common and will be the main focus of this sketch, though we will see a T-cell lymphoma pop up a little later. What makes a non-Hodgkin lymphoma so non? rather than a Hodgkin lymphoma. Well, can you read? No owls allowed! Fly around and disturb the merch. Not to mention that god-awful creepy stare thing they do. That means no Reed Sternberg cells to speak of. Non-Hodgkin lymphomas, or NHLs, have their own unique set of morphological and immunohistochemical features that we'll illustrate in a moment. Another classic difference between the NHLs and Hodgkin lymphoma is their pattern of lymph node involvement. Hodgkin likes to stay in a single nodal region, spreading contiguously from node to node. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma, on the other hand, is classically associated with multiple lymph nodes involved in a non-contiguous distribution, kind of like those bats up there, just sporadically popping up. Thirdly, Hodgkin lymphoma likes to just stay in its little group of nodes. In non-Hodgkin lymphoma, on the other hand, extranodal involvement is common. So we've scattered those B-cell chest pieces away from the lymph node board. This shouldn't be too surprising, though. Recall that secondary lymphoid tissues include not only the nodes and spleen, but also tonsils, GI tract, and even the lungs. Lymphoma cells can even migrate to non-lymphoid tissues. Think CNS lymphoma. There are many different types of non-Hodgkin lymphomas. They can generally be classified by whether they are low-grade, known as indolent, or high-grade, also known as aggressive. We'll arrange the low-grade on the left side of the shop around this smoldering torch, and the high-grade lymphomas on the right side of the shop near that brightly lit torch. Some of the most important indolent low-grade NHLs we will discuss today are Follicular lymphoma, embodied by that falling follicular sash, mucosal associated lymphoid tissue, or MALT lymphoma, which is a type of marginal zone lymphoma, and is symbolized by that pile of mucosal tissues. And finally, cutaneous T cell lymphomas, embodied by this creepy glory hand grabbing cutaneously, if you will, onto a helpless passerby. Uh, don't touch anything. <laughs> 